My fellow Americans, at this holy time of the year, families across our nation gather in homes, churches, and synagogues to light candles and to praise God. During the sacred holiday of Passover, Jewish families around the world give thanks to God for liberating the Jewish people from bondage in Egypt and delivering them to the Promised Land of Israel. For Christians, we remember the suffering and death of God's only Son and His glorious resurrection on the third day. On Easter Sunday, we proclaim with joy, Christ is risen. Both of these sacred celebrations remind us that God's love redeems the world. Almost 3,000 years ago, the prophet Isaiah wrote, Darkness covers the earth, but the Lord rises upon you, and His glory appears over you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light. In America, we look to the light of God to guide our steps. We trust in the power of the Almighty for wisdom and strength. And we praise our Heavenly Father for the blessings of freedom and the gift of eternal life. Happy Passover. Happy Easter. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America. What Easter message did you hear? Well, Donald Trump made his message loud and clear. Now let's take a look at what our current president said. Now understand, this is so heinous, so sick, so demented, even for Dementia Joe. What he said in his proclamation that you're about to see is so demented that I can't even say the words on this platform, and I'm sure you know why. So you're gonna have to read along with me as I show you what Poo Poo Joe put out. So let's read this together. Now, therefore, I fill in your name, President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution, the Constitution, and the laws of the United States do hereby proclaim March 31, 2024 as day of visibility. I call upon all Americans to join us in lifting up the lives and voices of those people throughout our nation and to work toward eliminating violence and discrimination based upon a certain identity. He goes on to say, in witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand this 29th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024 and of the independence of the United States of America, the 248th, signed Brandon. Take further attention at something here. He says that he set this in his hand in the year of our Lord. What Lord is he talking about? Because I'm pretty sure my Lord and probably your Lord isn't too happy about this. When I saw this yesterday, it basically left me speechless. Then I got enraged, and then I decided to get engaged. It's time for us Christians to finally say enough is enough. This is no longer a fight between left and right. This is a war with the evildoers amongst us. Our government has seemingly been taken over by evil. Thankfully, there's one man, one leader, who's ready to take the fight back to them. And here was Donald Trump's response to Poo Poo Joe's proclamation. And again, let's read it together. This is from Trump headquarters. It says, statement from Trump campaign on Brandon's blasphemous declaration of day on Easter Sunday. It is appalling and insulting that the president and the White House prohibited children from submitting religious egg decorations. That was another thing he did uh, for their Easter art event and formally proclaimed Easter Sunday as the day of Sadly, these are just two more examples of the administration's year-long assault on the Christian faith. We call upon Brandon and his failing campaign and the White House to issue an immediate apology to the millions of Catholics and Christians, one and the same, across America who believe tomorrow is for one celebration only, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is risen. That's the only thing we need to be celebrating on Easter Sunday. So I have to ask you personally, which Easter message is most appropriate for what you believe? I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video that it's Donald Trump's message. Dementia Joe's message, is an insult, an aberration, and in my opinion, it's an embrace of pure evil. I believe we have reached the precipice. We no longer have the ability to reason with insanity manifested by evil. You simply cannot make peace 
with evil. You only have one choice in dealing with evil, and that's to destroy it. Metaphorically speaking, we need to put on the armor of God and prepare for some serious battle. At this point, I don't believe there's any middle ground. You either stand against evil, or you are evil, or will be compromised by evil, and then consumed by it. And why this particularly sucks right now is that in order to confront this evil, you may end up losing comfort. You may end up losing friendships with and relationships with co-workers. You may end up losing money. You may end up losing family members. But that's a choice we have to make and we need to make it right now in my opinion. Now understand, I'm no pastor, but I do believe if people have heard the gospel and they've heard the messaging and they continue to go down these evil paths, then we must shun them. Yesterday I asked on Twitter, is there not a single Democrat in our government who's willing to stand up and recognize what this stuff is? Not one? I can't believe that to be the case. There obviously have to be some good people on the other side of the aisle, but I could not find a single Democrat who stood up to the White House and said, this is evil, this is wrong, take it down and apologize. Not a single one of them. Think about that for a second. That means that over half the people in the United States government are welcoming, including many of those who consider themselves Christian. And don't forget, Dementia Joe considers himself a Christian. Based upon what he's done, I wouldn't stand too close to him right now, you know, because he may erupt in flames. Like many of you, I went to church today. How did your service turn out? A lot of people were watching to see how priests and pastors responded today. I think today might be a day of reckoning for a lot of churches across the country. If they didn't stand up and take this stuff head on, we may see a lot of churches get empty really quick. Listen, I'm not shocked one bit that the Obama-Biden administration, yes, I said that the right way, that they made Easter Sunday the national <laughs> day. I'm not shocked by that because we know what they stand for. The question is, what are Christian churches going to do tomorrow? Will your pastor mount the sacred desk and act as if he doesn't know what is going on? Or will he address the issue and say something about it? Will he play politics and say, you know, we're not called to judge and we shouldn't say anything about these issues and we just need to love like Jesus and serve the community well? What is your preacher going to say? And I'll be the first to tell you this. If your pastor doesn't say anything about this, find a new church like quickly go online and find another church because you really need to because your pastor is woke but also here's an issue how in the world can christians go forward after this and support cough cough um leftists how can we do that john g john jr can we support leftists? Mm. Why? Because it's not the right thing. Why is it not the right thing? Because that's not what God planned. Thank you so much, my friend. Fortunately, many, many people were outraged by what Brandon said, and many are ready to fight back. In fact, many more than I can possibly show you in a short YouTube video. This is why as of last year I stopped praying for tolerance, because of the things that have taken place by Christians. Being way too tolerant, the behavior that's taken place with the White House, leadership at the top announcing that on Easter Sunday tomorrow, for many of you, they'll be going to church to celebrate. You know what you're celebrating? Resurrection. The White House chose to celebrate transgenders, the 0.1% of America, transgenders, who in many cases are going through challenges both mentally and emotionally, but we're wanting to celebrate the 0.1%, not the Christian nation, not the Christian leaders who have done incredible things for this country and the level of disgrace that this brings to us as a country, to the rest of the world, that our president wrote this and announced this yesterday for Sunday is a spit in the face to many Christians around the nation and you shouldn't be okay with this and you ought to stand up for yourself and realize that this is not acceptable. It's time for Christians to stop being so tolerant this type of behavior. By the way, this isn't a left, right, center thing. This is if you're a Christian and your life, God, comes before your political party, you ought to stand up. If your political party comes before your faith, don't do anything about it.
you decide what you value more, how you vote or how you pray. If we get those orders right, future looks bright. But if we stop fearing God and no longer wanting the favor of God, future doesn't look as bright as we think it does. That was Patrick Bet David with a very important message. Your faith, if you're a Christian, must come before your political affiliation. Breaking news, Joe Biden has declared Easter Sunday as day of visibility. Joe, I think there's been some sort of misunderstanding. Jesus came back from the dead on Sunday. He didn't come back as a woman. I mean, seriously, is a day of visibility even necessary? Because they're visible, Joe. Because everywhere I look, there's a pregnant man dominating in women's sports or a rainbow flag or a Miss Universe that looks more like a Mr. Rogers or a group of people who identify as pancakes trying to force feed themselves to a classroom full of third graders. They're visible. We can see them. Hey, maybe we could have a day of invisibility where we don't have to pretend that the adult man bagging our groceries is a beautiful lady. What's next? Christmas is going to be men's menstrual cycle day? Thanksgiving's going to be the feather festival to bring awareness to people who identify as birds? Let's just rename Monday to gay day. Instead of hiding little chocolate eggs on Easter, maybe we can hide candy-coated coupons for to reassignment surgery. Or hey, maybe instead of blatantly trolling Christians, we could just spend a little more time not running the country into the ground. Happy Easter, everyone. That was rapper Tom McDonald. Obviously, He's had enough, but he touches on a great point. Aren't there already enough days of visibility for these people? Look at this. This is a list of all their commemorative days. As there are only 365 days in a year, it appears that they want just about every other day to recognize their visibility. But as I said, we're not alone. Let's check out some of the tweets that got posted after this evil was unleashed upon all of his Christians. This is from Vivek Ramaswamy. Brandon declaring the most holy day for Christians as, quote, visibility day is a slap in the face to every American, whatever their faith. Now, the White House is also banning any religious symbolism on Easter eggs. That's insane. We're in the middle of a war in this country. And if you don't realize that, you need to wake up. We are definitely in a war for this country. And, it, and take it from a Hindu that isn't a Christian nationalist talking point. Bingo. Get ready, arm up. This one is from Jonathan Isaac, an NBA player with the Orlando Magic. He says, they know exactly what they're doing. We should be angry, but shouldn't lose the spirit of what tomorrow means, Easter. Don't lose focus because he is risen, there is hope for all. I like that message, but it's a kind of timid message to me. I think we need to understand that this war is not gonna be fought by just not losing focus. I found this one to be quite ironic, coming from Caitlyn Jenner, who you all know used to be Bruce Jenner. I am absolutely disgusted that Brandon has declared the most holy of holy days, a self-proclaimed devout Catholic, as Brandon calls himself, as blank day of visibility. The only thing you should be declaring on this day is he is risen. Caitlyn Jenner was absolutely correct. And Jesse Kelly, I think he nailed it with this one, talking about the weak-minded pastors across the country. The tragedy is not the communists attacking Easter with their blank filth. The tragedy is all of the eunuch pastors who won't address it from the pulpit and inform the flock that war has been declared upon them. That indeed is a tragedy. Too busy turning the other cheek. What a disgrace. Disgraceful. Absolutely correct. This is no longer about turning the other cheek. This is about confusing confronting this evil head on. And if your pastor isn't ready to do that, you're following the wrong guy. This one's from Senator Ted Cruz. This is what Brandon cares about and who he caters to. He is devaluing Easter and elevating that kind of recognition. Downright shameful and despicable. Can't argue with that. This one is from Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. The White House has betrayed the central tenet of Easter, which is the resurrection of Christ. Banning sacred truth and tradition while at the same time proclaiming Easter Sunday as a visibility day is outrageous and abhorrent. The American people are taking note. I hope so. I hope many people in America are taking note and getting ready to step up to the plate and take some action. This here is from Dan Bongino, who is recovering from cancer, as you may know. Additional evidence that what we're dealing with transcends politics. There are dark forces at work eating at this country like an aggressive cancer. Scum Brandon and his goons don't want to beat you. They want to hurt you. 
badly. I, I think people need to understand that. There is nothing good to come from this if you are a Christian. They're not looking to make you, you know, friends and, and try to get you to be more inclusive. They are trying to hurt you and they want to hurt you badly. Wake up. And this is from Pastor Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son. Brandon has declared tomorrow, today, Easter Sunday, as his day of visibility. This once again shows how little respect he and his administration have for God. On the most significant day of the Christian calendar, when the church around the world celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who died and shed his blood for the sins of mankind, the administration uses this opportunity to flaunt sin, to glorify sin, and to celebrate sin. The Bible says they proclaim their sin like Sodom. Oof, very strong. They don't hide it. Woe to them, Isaiah says. Judgment is coming. Instead of celebrating sin, we need to confess our sins, repent of our sins, and ask for God's forgiveness. Applause. That's the message right there. This is about Jesus being risen. This is about the resurrection of Christ, and they have tainted it forever. I understand. Fighting back will be extremely hard. It's also going to be really painful. As I mentioned earlier, some of us may lose friends and family members over this fight. And some of us may lose jobs or money. But in a fight between good and evil, it's a zero-sum game. We have no choice but to make a stand at this point. In addition to Donald Trump, I really admire someone else who has stood bravely and is at the forefront of taking the arrows because he's standing up for what he believes. You talk about the fear. It's like what Chappelle said. Chappelle said, you know how many shoe offers I've been made and I never took one? You know why? Because when they do something you like, the first thing they do is take your shoes back. Mm. And then once they take your shoes back, everybody else starts going, oh my God, should we take ours away too? And, and that's how it all starts in this whole snowball effect uh, happens when when somebody tries to cancel somebody else. If people don't stand up to this ridiculous bullshit, it's just, it's never gonna end and it's gonna go on forever. I'm, I'm done with it to a level now where I'm just so openly, blatantly done, like calling out Peloton and other sponsors of mine. I was with some sponsors too that, that, that called and I was like, go fuck yourself. You've talked about that recently. Yeah. And take your money, roll it up into a little ball, and shove it right up your ass, because I'm done. I don't want your money. What did I they don't want this kind of money. What did they say? Lots of things. They, they called me. They called me when I posted a video on my own social media about Trump. They called me about Joe Rogan. They called me about um, going through COVID. Called me about every... If somebody stubbed their fucking toe, they called me on the thing. And finally, I got to the point said, I'm fucking done, guys. Mm -mm. So then, you know, when it was time to, when our contract was up, you know, there was, there was a big number on the table. And I said, take that huge number, roll it up into a little ball and shove it right up your board of directors ass. I completely agree with Dana White. The enemy's biggest weapon is fear. The main reason why most people don't stand up to the insanity is because they're afraid. And trust me, I get it. They use that fear as a weapon. But at some point, we all have to ask ourselves, we all have to look in the mirror and say, when is enough enough? As a part of this journey called life, I believe personally it's time to take a stand. I'm a little bit older, but I've got grandchildren that I wanna see grow well in America. So I just have one question. Are you ready to do battle? And if not now, what will it take for you to be ready to stand up and join this battle? Let me know what you think about this insanity. I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks for watching.